at some point, the intellect and everything that you've learned has got to be put down. Why? Because you are now at the point of instead of looking out or looking at or seeking or trying to find or trying to understand, you're now at the point where you're prepared to put all that down and have a direct experience of this yourself. And to do that, to do that, the only place that you can abide or rest is in your own truth. Your truth, your direct truth, and your direct truth is I am. There is presence, there is awareness, there is a knowing that I am, and you don't need to rely on any intellect whatsoever to know I am. It's directly experienced. And to know that you are means there's beingness, consciousness, and hopefully a loving to be. <laughs> hopefully. And I, the only reason I say hopefully and, and laughed was because at, at the end of my path, I was not too happy about being. So I was not in love with being. I was over it. I was over it. You know, like... I knew that I was being, which meant there was knowing that I was being, but I wasn't too bloody happy about being. Okay. Okay. I, because it was like... What haven't I seen? What haven't I understood? I was determined to wake up. <laughs> I was determined to wake up. Nothing else mattered to me. Nothing else mattered to me. That was the most important thing in my life, bar none. And it wasn't happening. Yet I had a, a, a pretty good sound intellectual understanding of this. <laughs> and yet, I don't know how many times I heard the answer is not in the mind. Yeah. When was I really going to hear that and put the mind down? And when I say mind, I mean finite mind. When was that? When was I just going to lay that to rest and start from my own direct experience, start exploring this beingness, this consciousness, this awareness, this that I am experiencing? Can't deny it. Here I am. And there's an aliveness and there's awareness, there's beingness. It's there. Can't deny it. When am I going to stop, put the mind down, stop, turn around and start exploring that? Yeah. Um, Did you do that as a practice? I, I, I did that. Um, right at the end. I did it as an intellectual practice, but didn't help me. Because what I realized I was doing intellectually, I was just parroting. 
all the things that I'd learned. That's what I was doing. Yeah. And I figured because I'd learnt it, that was it. Like I, yep, got that, tick that box. Yep, got that, tick that box. I didn't get anything. I didn't get anything. You know, in the end, what did I learn from everything that I'd acquired, everything that I'd come to learn? What I learned was I can't rely on that. That's got to be put down. I'll put that down. And there was such a reluctance in me initially to do that. Yet, <laughs> the answer's not in the mind. The mind, and I'm talking about finite mind, can only take us so far and is necessary to take us so far. But then you reach a point where that now has to be relinquished or put down. Now, if that does happen, if that is relinquished, and the mind, the finite mind is put down and laid to rest, what's left? Sort of impersonal, sort of impersonal consciousness. consciousness. Impersonal, did you say? Yes, yes. Could you even say that? Well, I, I, well, kind, I, of I kind of noticed. The absence of the, the person. The person. Yeah. When there isn't much there thinking. Isn't much thinking. Yeah, yeah. But we're not interested in the person. The person's not even real. It's not even real. So rather than noticing the absence of the person, how about we notice the presence of the presence? Yeah, there's presence. Yeah, there's presence. Yeah. Absolutely, there's presence. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. when we when we relinquish mind and we put mind down, what is left? Presence, presence consciousness. consciousness. Mm -hmm. Is there anything you can find that's objective about that? Right now. Mm -hmm. From your direct experience. Mm -hmm. 